and tell them Max sent you. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. Well, welcome. It is uh, a great day, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, This is just a little seven or eight minute uh, commentary, uh, if I may. Uh, I guess that's what I do all the time. But uh, it's just you and I here in the studio. Well, obviously, Ryan's here, but it's just you and I. And I just want to talk to you for a minute about Caitlyn Jenner uh, or Bruce Jenner or whatever you want to call uh, him or her. Um, First of all, Jesus teaches us to be loving and tolerant to all people, especially those that we disagree with. I mean, for heaven's sakes, Jesus taught us to love our enemies. Love our enemies. Imagine the love that we should have for those people that we care about. Uh, I think about that with my own family. Sometimes I think I give my, my own family the, the love I've got left over after I divvy it out to everybody else. So let's make sure that no matter how you feel, uh, about the Jenner situation, that you put love first. Uh, not because it looks like you should, because that's what Christ tells you to do in your heart. You know, I'm not a politically correct guy. I don't really care if somebody thinks that I use a, a, an incorrect word or that I uh, think one person or one group of people are, are, are different than the other. Uh, when you call me a bigot, you're complimenting me. If you call me a racist, you're just showing me your level of education. When you swear at me, I now know how ignorant you probably are, if that's all the language you've got. But Caitlyn Jenner is a different story. And, and here's why. Uh, we've been watching the life of Bruce Jenner for 30 years. Uh, Bruce Jenner was a hero. He was on the box of Wheaties. I mean, seriously, as Americans go... Who makes it onto the box of Wheaties? It's athlete, athletes who are just over the top. And then we watched him get married, and then we watched him get a divorce, and then we watched him hook up with the Kardashians and marry one of the Kardashians, and it just seemed to go from there. And Bruce always seemed like, I don't know, like he was on something. And I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be judgmental here. I'm trying to discern at the highest level with kindness at the next highest level. But Bruce just never seemed the sharp guy that he was when he crossed that finish line, when he won those gold medals. It just seems to me that life got the best of Bruce. And I don't think it was a life filled with God. I think it was a life filled with the accuser. And because, and I I don't know, maybe you're smarter than I am. I still can't figure out where the Kardashians came from. It seems that they're famous for being famous, and that's it. But their life went on in front of us on TV, and we all sit there and watch while we chew on our popcorn and our Dr. Pepper, and we just say, wow, that's what it's like to be a celebrity. And we never probably sat back and prayed for the Kardashians. I can tell you that I didn't. Uh, That changed a couple days ago. I added them to my prayer list. Because what's happening in that family right now, when you add Canaan in in his involvement west and, and, and that whole thing, you're watching the accuser hold up an American icon and that family as the exact opposite of what God had planned for them. Now, I know because of our free will, we don't, we don't get to do plan A that God has for us all the time. And then depending on what your theology is and how much you believe in Arminianism, Arminianism and Calvinism, uh, you may think you have very little free will or you may think you rule the roost. And the truth is somewhere in the middle, and we won't know. It's the mystery we won't know until we get next to our Father in heaven. But you just can't tell me. You can't tell me that God's plan for Bruce Jenner's life was to do what he's doing. And what is he doing? He's denying his identity. Christ gives us an identity. 
We are to be who Christ created us to be, who our Father God intended us to be. I don't quote scripture very well, but my wife's favorite scripture is Jeremiah. You know, I have a plan for you. I have a hope. It's for good. And I don't think God is stomping his foot up in heaven yelling, well, he doesn't swear, but yelling at Bruce Jenner that he didn't follow his plan. I think he's crying. I think when Bruce Jenner won Arthur Ashe Hero of the Year Award the other day from ESPN, I think God said the accuser is doing a better job with Bruce than I am. That he has given Bruce this incredible earthly, fleshy success. And now he's holding him up. The world is holding him up for being brave and courageous. I don't see bravery or courageous there at all. Bravery are guys that go to Iraq and Afghanistan and come home with fewer parts than they went with, and they don't give up on life and they don't give up on their family. Bravery is is Tracy Kay, who is raising four children under the age of four. four. Uh, Bravery is that teacher that goes into school every day knowing that her words may fall void. That, that, that what she's responsible for doing and teaching these kids, she may never be able to get to, across to them. Courage. Courage is when a wife says to her husband, you don't treat me very well. Courage is when a, a man uh, finally goes home to his wife and says, I've been cheating on you. And I know you're going to be madder than heck, but I got to tell you because I want to re, rebirth our relationship. The jokes about Caitlyn Jenner will not end. Uh, They will go on and on and on and on. What we have to do is to remember to pray, yes, pray for Caitlyn Jenner or whatever her name is or his name. But we also have to remember that the accuser is here in the flesh on earth and he's he's taking us one by one. And he just took Bruce Jenner down a little bit farther. What do I want you to do today? At the end of my shows, I always ask you to pray. I always ask you to pray for forgiveness, that you will be forgiven as you have been forgiven and that you have forgave other people. Today, I want you to look around to your family and I want you to talk about the Bruce Jenner situation. I want you to talk to your kids about it. And I want you to frame that conversation around identity that God created each one of us magically and wonderfully to be one thing, and that's his child. And he has plans for us, and they're wonderful plans. And when we lose sight of that identity, that's when everything goes awry. The accuser stands up, takes a bow, listens to the nonstop applause from the earth, and God cries just a little bit more because he created you to be what he created you to be. Just know that you're loved, that Jesus loves you, that you are perfect in God's eyes, and that Jesus is always here to remind you of who he created you to be. And he created you to be an apostle, a disciple, a good Christian man and woman, to go out into the world and share the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. So until Monday, I'll see you in church.